It's really awesome to be back with you all um, after being away for a couple of weeks uh, doing some family events. Um, I'm really grateful to have the opportunity to be with you here today and to share with you some of uh, my thoughts um, about gratitude when I remember you in my prayers. That's the sermon title. It's up on the screen. That's good. It's good to know. The author of the letter, 2 Timothy, begins the body of that letter with these words. Uh, I am grateful to God when I remember you in my prayers day and night. Well, my friends, I know that the practice of gratitude um, has become kind of popularized in our secular culture. I've heard many uh, psycho, uh, psychology scholars and others and friends of mine even say that, you know, if you, if you start each day just thinking about three things that you're grateful for, then that will influence how you are living out your day. Um, it's pretty cool that that wisdom was in the New Testament all those years ago. So <laughs> I just want to bring that home. But there is something really profound about starting and ending your day, day and night in your prayers, remembering what you are grateful for. What are you grateful for? How do you express that gratitude? Who do you express that gratitude to? I ask those questions uh, because uh, I have a confession to make, and that is simply this. I am not the best Christian apologist. I do pretty well with people who are interested in our faith and the Bible and teaching and maybe preaching, we'll see. But um, I don't do as well with those who claim to be atheist or agnostic. But I've had many, many conversations over the year, and for my conversations with those people, um, there's usually two things that I talk about. The first is... What do you do with a sense of awe, of wonder? You know what I'm talking about? If you experience a really majestic sunrise or sunset, or if you're present for the birth of a baby, right? Sometimes we become overcome with this emotion of awe and wonder. And so when I talk to people who don't claim to have any faith in a higher power, I'll ask them, what do you do with that? You know, is it simply a random firing of the brain that gives you this emotional response? And if so, what evolutionary help is that to humanity as a species? It's not really a good answer. What do you do with your sense of awe? And the second thing I usually talk about uh, with friends, and this is usually on bike rides of all places, because that's where you have really important theological conversations, is on (laughs) bike rides, is what do you do with the sense of gratitude? Have you ever like been saved from some impending disaster in your life? Or have you ever just sat down and take stock of your life and are sort of overcome with this feeling of gratefulness, of gratitude? Who do you express that to? You. 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 (laughs) To mom, right? Yes, mom is the right answer. Well, in addition to having conversations with our non-believing friends and family, I actually think that this practice of gratitude can be quite profound for us. Um, I want to encourage you, like the author of the letter does today, to remember in your prayers day and night the things you're grateful for. So uh, what are you grateful for? For me, it's a pretty simple thing. All I have to do to remember what I'm grateful for is to go home. If you don't know about my home life, it's pretty great. When I go home, I get to see my wife, Allison. She is a priest. She serves another parish, so we're not usually together on Sunday mornings. And you know, we met at seminary. Do you all know that? So there's no doubt in my mind that she's a gift that God prepared for me, right? I can't question that because if I didn't have faith in God, and if I didn't answer God's call on my life to ordain ministry and go to seminary, I never would have met her, right? So very easily, when I go home and I see my wife, I have an overwhelming sense of gratitude for God's gift on my life. And then we have two children, and they wouldn't be here for those same reasons. There's one right there. Hey, Hill. And there's one over there. Hey, Paylet. And these two young people are the most incredible young people I know. All of your children are great, but these two in particular <laughs> are pretty, pretty special. Paylet, otherwise known as Fierce Bear, and I, Sleeping Bear, spent last weekend together uh, Possum Kingdom for her uh, YMCA Navigators program, and uh, she is a really good uh, 
fisher person. She is really good at fishing, and I didn't know that. And now, Saturday, my brother-in-law is going to take us fishing so we can actually catch a fish, because Daddy's not so good at it. <laughs> but I am grateful to know that she loves fishing, and I wouldn't have had that experience if we'd not had that time together last weekend. I share that with you just simply uh, as you consider your own gifts and blessings of your life. I, I hope that whatever it is you're grateful for, that you will consider that day and night and will help you live your life with a sense of joy. The letter to 2 Timothy here um, gives us a couple other uh, things that maybe we should be grateful for. One of the lines the author says is that um, this grace was given to us long ago. Christ Jesus, before the ages, has now appeared. He's abolished death and brought life and immortality through light to the gospel. So there's no reason for us to fear death or separation from God because of the gift of Christ. And that is something that I'm profoundly grateful for because I've experienced a lot of death in my life from an early age. And I've always known and trusted and had faith in God's promise of resurrection. And because of that, because of that gift, I have a sense of gratitude for life rather than a sense of doom or sadness. Another gift that's talked about here is a spirit, not of cowardice, but a spirit of confidence, of strength, a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. God gives us the gift of that spirit, which enables us to face whatever trials that life has for us, and I'm profoundly grateful for that gift as well. During this month of October, we as a church are participating in a month of gratitude. Um, and we have uh, prepared some handy dandy journals for you. It says grace on the front. Some of you picked these up several weeks ago. They are available here at the doors when we leave today. And the idea was uh, to spend a minute every day uh, just writing down something that you've experienced as a grace. But here's the secret. In the middle of the journal, it turns to gratitude, right? And so the idea is that every day that you would write down something that you're grateful for. And that when you come here on Sunday, that you would go to one of the stewardship tables up upstairs and write down on a leaf just one thing that you're grateful for. And you can do this today as well. If you go down the hall, the ambulatory, um, by the nave of the church outside of the, the garden cloister, you'll see a giant tree. And every week throughout the course of the week, all the leaves that are written on will be added to that tree. So at the end of this month, we can look and see all the things that we as a church are grateful for calling those gratitude leaves. What do you do with a sense of gratitude? I think if we receive a gift from someone, um, I was taught by my mother that um, I should write them a thank you card, right? I should express my gratitude in a particular way. Not so that I would get another gift the next year, <laughs> but out of a pr profound sense that I'm thankful and I want to express that. And I think it works the same in our own lives with our relationship with God. If we are grateful for the gifts that we have received, and we acknowledge that those gifts come to us solely by God's grace, then we should in turn express our gratitude through giving back to God. And we do that, we call this stewardship, through giving back to God our time, our talent, and our treasure. So I encourage you this month to prayerfully consider all of those gifts in your life, those things that you're grateful for. You've got a journal. Spend some time with it. You don't have to follow it exactly as it's prescribed. Spend some time just thinking of all the grace that you've experienced and all the things that you're grateful for. And then tell God, show God that you're grateful and how you practice your stewardship of time, talent, and treasure. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this place. Um, and I'm thankful that we are in this journey together. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for all of the many gifts you've given to us, especially the gift of health and salvation that we know through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, all that we have and all that we are are gifts from you. We are created in your image by your love. And we are grateful. Help us to show our gratitude to you and be an example to the world in all that we do, sharing what we've been given from you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.